Happy Thanksgiving to the two guests that's with Brock and us. Because Brock, we have already celebrated Thanksgiving. We celebrated yeah. a real Thanksgiving, a.k.a. Tim Horton's <laughs> Day back in October. <laughs> We're joined with Lauren from Galactic Podcast and Pete from Around the Galaxy. How are you both doing? Hi, how are you guys? Excellent. How are you guys doing? Happy oh, holiday. I don't want to Happy speak Happy American Brock. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, happy, happy Thanksgiving, Pete. Fun, fun fact about Canadian Thanksgiving: it was mostly just made up so we could have a holiday in October. That's <laughs> I looked it up. It used to have a somewhat religious thing to it, but it's. I was like, why do we do it in October? So it's just. It was probably the the word was just the Thanksgiving was like the Americans do it, so we'll just do it in October and call it Thanksgiving because it's the fall. <laughs> do you guys do turkey like uh, oh, like we do? Or... Yeah, okay. All right. It's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Just in October. <laughs> yeah, it's not like we have like a bag of hockey pucks on the table or anything like that. Oh. Like it's if anything, we omit stuff from it. Like depending on where you are, but turkey or ham or whatever or both. But we don't Better get Black Friday them. deals afterwards. That's true. We just get work on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> we get green Thursday, and they give us all free uh, maple maple leaf things. <laughs> no. These are things Americans believe about Canada. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably what they do. <laughs> and do you guys have any special, like, play, like, do you guys do anything special other than turkey for Thanksgiving? Especially this year with the pandemic, are you doing anything? Oh, wow. Uh, we're keeping it very, very immediate. So I'm just going to my mom and dad's uh, and my sister and her little little small family are meeting us there. And that's it. So, yeah, we're keeping it very small this year. Yeah, we uh, we usually have multiple sides of the family there, but it's just going to be uh, just the in-laws um, who visit us uh, all the time anyway, whether we want them to or not. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be subdued. It'll be nice. It'll be kind of. Actually, in a way, kind of prefer it. Although, you know, it's been eight months of subdued. So yeah. I think I, um, <laughs> should be. We do admittedly have our Christmas tree up uh, a week before nice. this year, which normally we don't. Usually we put that off till uh, the day after. But we're just like, you know what? Screw it. Let's get out there. Let's uh, brighten up the house a little bit. So. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been doing that this year. You have to have a little bit of fun when you're stuck doing nothing. <laughs> this is true. And this Brock true. will be on the Target website looking for deals oh. that he can have and not go there and visit. In person. Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to cross the border for some Black Friday shopping. <laughs> They're going to let me. <laughs> and they will not. Do they have okay. curbside pickup. Maybe they'll have border side pickup. You just yeah, go up yeah. and yeah. Border like, uh, what, what's your there. business in the US? And you'll be like, nothing. I just I'm here for that target guy. Right there. Yeah, and then when cool. you come back, what would you like to declare? Nothing. Nothing. I think I think anything. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. We're gonna talk about uh Star Wars in the theater. So when we get think we're gonna get the start of Brock, I'll start with you. The very yeah. first time, when was the very first time, and what was the experience like when you saw Star Wars in the movie theater? My first time was last year when we watched... <laughs> no. um, for me, I don't think it's the first time I watched Star Wars in general, but the first time would be the re-release in 97 of A New Hope? Mm -hmm. 97? That was awesome. uh, yeah, I remember, I remember that pretty vividly. I remember waiting in line and going in. I don't really remember actually sitting and watching the movie in there, but I know it's there. And I, it began a lifelong uh, obsession for sure because I framed my ticket stub. Oh, wow. And I was fully prepared to watch the other two, but at the time, 97, I would have been 12. I'm 84. I'm sorry, math. Hold on a second. 13, 14. <laughs> um, and I, I didn't go see Empire Rise of uh, Rise. <laughs> Rise of the Jedi. <laughs> Jedi. Wow. Brock has a DeLorean. Place. Everyone should know that. <laughs> He's got a DeLorean. It was framed. Like, New Hope was to the left in the... It was a picture frame like this. And then it was here. And then the next one. And then the next one. But I never ended up seeing them. Of course, I've probably got the 17th re-release on VHS that year. Or like... <laughs> 
excuse me for like not having the actual timeline, but yeah, that would be my first theatrical Star Wars experience. And Lauren, how about you? Oh, so yeah, didn't see the any of the OTs, even the special uh the re-releases. Um so mine was Phantom Menace. Uh nice. what was that, ninety nine then? Nine, so yeah. yeah, that was oh man, I just remember sitting there and just thinking like, man, I'm I'm watching Star Wars in a theater, like this is this is crazy. <laughs> this is really, really cool. And just I remember seeing those images of little Anakin and the pod racing and it just you know, blew my mind when, even though I've seen, you know, I saw the original trilogy a bunch of times, you know, seeing something new in Star Wars on the big screen was something that I will probably always remember, especially with Phantom Menace and uh, being that first one. So, yeah, Phantom Menace was my first one in the theater. That's awesome. For me, it was the the re-release like Brock, A New Hope in the theater, very first time. Boring comparison. Sorry, we gotta go to Pete now with his first experience because he's gonna trump <laughs> us all with it. Because well, I've already heard it, but know, I, and it's a great one. I, you know, I'm I'm equal parts embarrassed and proud because of, <laughs> of the fact that I saw the original in the theater at seven years old. Um, which you know, math for for Brock that means I'm fifty. So, uh, um, but yeah, I remember seeing it in. Uh, yeah, you'll get it. You'll get it. I'll, we'll, a little long division um but we uh i remember it was actually it was later in the it was it turns out it was like in the september time frame because of course back back in the day back when i was a boy <laughs> movies stayed in the theater much much longer and um so i went uh it was probably labor day weekend and um i don't remember actually seeing much of the movie for some reason i have vivid memories of like 3po in the desert um and a, a little bit of uh, the stormtrooper stuff, but my memory is sitting in the back of my parents' station wagon uh, because it was before safety was invented, and I just sat <laughs> in the way far back. And I remember um, looking and pretending I was flying an X-wing, and every car that went by, I was pretending to shoot a Tie Fighter oh, down. That's nice. that's my memory of seeing seeing it in the in the theater, and um, and so that's been uh, that's that's a, a kind of it's funny because a lot of people who saw it in the theater for the first time. Like always, they always talk about. Oh, I remember the spaceship coming over and the uh, the star destroyer, and I don't remember that. I just remember I was excited <laughs> to go, and I was excited when I left. So, so you're the only true fan of the four of us. Is what That's true. <laughs> I am the only true fan. You are all you are all posers, <laughs> but uh, we're hacks. Well, let's we're juxtapose that now with uh, the Mandalorian, which had a, a release a year ago, but. It was a little which bit I saw different. in the theaters in 1978. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. But Pete, why don't you start us off with that? The first time you saw that, the experience of oh watching that as well. You know, it was it was funny because um, it was there was so much excitement around just getting Disney Plus and 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 this whole new network. So um, I actually watched the first episode of The Mandalorian um, in my bed on my iPhone, and. <laughs> Because it was early in the morning and I was just excited that it worked. And so I watched it. Um, uh, I watched about the first 15 minutes of it. And I was like, you know, I got to go watch this on the TV downstairs. And I remember just I thought I was like, this is cool. I'm enjoying this. This Oh, that's neat. And then, of course, at the end with the child appearing, I literally it's one of the very rare moments where I literally like stood up and was like, whoa, what did I just see? And it was it was so great that it wasn't spoiled. So many things are spoiled in today's movie going experience or entertainment experience. And the fact that that wasn't is, is miraculous. And I'm so glad it wasn't. Cause it just, it, it pulled you right, right into this series. You, you were just, you were stuck. You were going all in at this point. Lauren. Yeah. I, uh, oh man, again, kind of like what Pete was saying, you know, Disney Plus was kind of a, a big thing and everybody was really excited about it. And obviously the Mandalorian as Star Wars fans, we were just pumped, especially if you were at, you know, Chicago Celebration. Um, I was at that panel. I mean, just hearing John Favreau, Filoni, uh, Pedro, and all of them just talk about how much they loved just being on set and doing this new kind of brand, I mean, really brand new Star Wars. Like nobody... It's an era that we weren't familiar with. It's just brand new characters. So you really kind of got, you know, excited just being there. And then when the show started in that first episode and you're just like, man, this is this is different. It's different Star Wars, but it felt Star Wars at the same time, you yeah. know, 
the music from Ludwig again it it was different but it it fits so well in that first episode and you just you were into it just like uh, Pete said you were you were locked in once you started watching it and once you kind of just let the story start unfolding and then that moment of the child you know showing up at the end it Right. I mean, I was just like, Pete, I was just like, oh, my God, what <laughs> what just happened? Like, I need to see the rest of the series. Like, what's going on? Like, you wanted to know everything at that point. And then, right. I mean, how they held that secret for so long is amazing, especially when you had Celebration, you know, uh, a few months before that. And nothing got leaked. Nothing got mm. said. Nothing got mentioned. I mean, it, that is a miracle in itself. And that's mm. kudos to, I think, that team keeping that stuff under wraps. But, yeah, that was – and that first episode was so good, too. I mean, again, it drew you in. It, it was different, but it was – you know, there was those Easter eggs that you we all saw in that first episode. So, yeah, it was it was so good. <laughs> it was so and, good, and, and it's still good. And it was laugh out loud funny even before mm-hmm. the child showed up. Because I remember laughing yep. at the IG-11 lines, and it was just – I loved <laughs> that connection. And it was yeah. full of shocks, and, and that, that was, I think, why it worked so well was because it was full of – that first – episode was full of shock because Mm -hmm. you know i may or may not have seen bootleg versions of what they showed at chicago um (laughs) so i had seen that little bit um Mm -hmm. but i had no idea what we were going to see and and again it was shocking when he shot ig11 because i was thinking based on promotion and based on the relationship they built in that little battle they're going to be buds and they're going to go through everything together and then bam so shock after shock and it was just so great Yeah. yeah and brock you haven't seen it yet (laughs) (laughs) what? <laughs> <laughs> what was your first experience watching the mandalorian like? oh i was uh i was going to say when pete was talking about watching it on his iphone uh, i currently do that with every episode yeah of, uh, well i i do I, you know, i'm with you man i literally like i will set my alarm for 5 45 a.m so i can watch it before anybody wakes up and then I'll go watch it later again in the day with the kids on the full size TV. Oh, absolutely. It's a it's definitely worth a second watch on every mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, I love the Mandalorian. Yeah. You have to watch it early in the morning, otherwise it gets spoiled no matter what you do. And <laughs> no spoilers till Monday and then like, you know, six oh one AM Friday morning. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, yeah. Don't eat the blue macaroon. Like, why? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. how it is but it, it's great so i just want to get those to mention those talk about those first experience on both because star wars right now is in this it's, it's in a weird state not a weird state it's a great state i mean everything we're getting is great but it's weird in terms of we've been so used to having it theatrically for uh 40 plus years right i mean Minus the ten year gaps in between, but we keep it keep it's it's the movie theater experience. Now they brought it to Disney Plus. It's a massive hit on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. The theatrical release was supposed to be twenty twenty two. COVID happened. It got moved to twenty twenty three. And I believe the last thing that Disney has shown that Star Wars isn't even on their slate of films anymore. However, mm. don't worry. Everybody that has directed a movie has been attached to a Star Wars <laughs> film. <laughs> but Taika <laughs> Waititi, apparently they're going to do second unit shoots or something in New Zealand or something in December. Mm. I don't know how you do that when you don't have a premise yet or a plot or a script. But I mean, George Lucas did it with with the the volcano in Italy, if you remember, for the Mustafar stuff, and he hadn't written <laughs> that one yet. So, I guess with Star Wars, anything is possible. But we're going to talk about the the state of Star Wars in the theater and mm. um, what we can expect from that. So, Pete, let me get off to you. Start off with you, mm-hmm. and like all the things that are happening, all the, these names have been attached to to movies. First of all, who do you think is going to direct the first Star Wars film since the rise of Skywalker? That's a great question. Um, I, I think it's probably Taika. I just think he's probably going to be. Um, it, it just makes sense. I think he's also got the 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 right experience um, because I think a lot of the the other names like uh, Leslie Headley is more attached to a television show. Um, Deborah Chow um is attached to obi-wan um and um i I don't know i for a while there i was thinking it could be favreau um but i think the mandalorian has been so successful i don't think they want to pull pull him away from that so i'm i'd put my my chips on taika yeah brock yeah it's 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 the only thing i feel like we can answer right now because he's the only one that's been vocal really about 
anything movie wise with Star Wars. So I mean, we haven't heard anything about Kevin Feige in however long, and Ryan Johnson is the same. So it's like, I guess it's Taika. I don't know. But you know, we were just talking about how Baby Yoda, one of the best kept secrets in the Star Wars world in like twenty to thirty years. Mm-hmm. Maybe there are they there is something in the works and they are just waiting or they're trying to stay as tight lipped as possible. Yep. Lauren? Yeah, I mean I agree with Brock and P. It's probably Taika. I mean, I think that's the one that we've had we, that we've heard more about than anybody really that you know, he is going to be doing a Star Wars movie, maybe a trilogy, who knows, we don't really know if it's going to be more than one, but I feel like we've heard about his, him doing and being involved in a star Wars movie more than anybody recently. And it makes sense, especially him being attached to the Mandalorian and people, you know, obviously enjoying his work beyond star Wars, uh, you know, all of his um, other great movies that he's done. So it makes sense that he will probably be the next director of a star Wars movie. I would love for me as a female, I would love Bryce Dallas Howard to get a shot. Yeah, I've enjoyed her episodes of The Mandalorian so far. They've been utterly fantastic. Um, I would love for her to get a shot at something. That's just my personal. That's my maybe wish list if you want. But, uh, but yeah, I think Taika for sure though. I think is the obvious choice that I think he'll be the first to do the next movie. Let me side Akbar. There's... Sorry, go on, Pete. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to side Akbar on what Lauren <laughs> just said and go into um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Maybe mm-hmm. not a film, but could you see her doing, uh, like Deborah Chow moved into Obi Wan Kenobi? Mm-hmm. Could they give her one of these Mandalorian spinoff shows, possibly to Bryce Dallas Howard? What do you guys I think? wouldn't mind it. I think she, I think she's more than capable of doing it. I think with those two episodes that we've seen, and obviously just her pedigree. I mean, her father is one of you know a great director, and I think she's definitely you know within that realm of you know she's very familiar with doing it and i think she could do very very well if she did if, like i said if you did a series or a movie but yeah maybe a series would make more sense for her though right now who knows i the thing i was gonna say was actually directly related to that um and that is you know one of the things about bryce dallas howard's approach to the shows is it's very very subtle right mm-hmm. so i will readily admit that when i I went back and I thought about the first eight episodes of Mando. I thought number five was my least favorite because Toro Calican. <laughs> There's nothing good about that <laughs> character. Um, sorry, Steel, but there was zero I can say that's positive about that. Um, but my second least favorite was um, episode four, which she mm-hmm. did. And um, when I went back and I rewatched it, it you know the thing is they're all so close as far as quality Mm -hmm. goes i can't say it moved to number one or two but i really appreciated it because what she did and she did a nice job of it also i think in her episode in season two was she did a really great job of giving you a unique perspective uh from the child's point of view and i Mm -hmm. you know next time you watch that episode you'll know she uses a lot of lower camera angles she does things that kind of put you in not necessarily you know it's not like as obvious as et where it was never you know above a child's view but she positions it you get like that's the first episode to me where you get a sense of scale between how small Mm -hmm. the child is and how tall the mandalorian is and that makes that relationship more interesting the other reason the other thing i was going to say was i think the reason taika makes sense to come back is it will be what uh minimum of four years since there's been a star wars movie which Mm -hmm. you know by our old standards is next to nothing but by today's (laughs) standards is a very long time and one of the things that taika does so well is he mixes humor uh he mixes drama and he mixes action and that's what works for star wars best i think that's why the force awakens is among people's top star wars movie because it brought you back to what you remembered from the 70s and 80s but at the same time it had the right amount of humor and the sensibilities of a modern film so i think he is a perfect person to bring us back to star wars in the movie theaters brock anything want to add uh, no, I agree with all of that. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard, I mean, just the fact that she did a shot for shot of uh, yeah. the landing oh, the yeah. episode from Apollo so good. 13, <laughs> Apollo, 13. Yeah, Apollo 13. 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, you didn't have to do that, but she did. And I'm like, (laughs) I mean, maybe there's more to it. Like, hey, wouldn't you want to do this? She's like, yeah. No, or like, okay, guys, I had this really good idea. (laughs) Uh, Those touches are great. So it's like, and, and then like, we've talked about episode four of the first season so many times. It's the most memeable episode, so I guess for the director, <laughs> I mean, maybe Yoda all in the bowl of soup. It's all over the internet. Um, <laughs> but I'm on board for honestly, I haven't heard a director if it's true or not that they've announced that wasn't a bad idea. So it's like, mm-hmm. let's do it. Like, if you if you guys watch uh, our channel as much as we watch yours, like. All we constantly say is like more Star Wars content, more, 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 yep. more, 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 more. Like it's like what in the last 10, five years, I don't know. I don't know why I changed to 10 because like, <laughs> but the content that we've got to get for Star Wars has been pretty good in my opinion mm-hmm. across the board. I could be wrong, but it's like, I know we're talking just about theater right now, but like I haven't been let down in mm. my opinion. Right, so yeah, sky's the limit. Okay, so let's move on. Just switch gears just a little bit in, in terms of the theatrical Star Wars, and then you have uh, the original trilogy, and then the prequel trilogy, and then you have the sequel trilogy, and of course Rogue One and Solo, and Solo obviously ruined Star Wars in the theater. Right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally ruined. did. But but we had, but the one thing that all that all 10 of 10 is that 10 10 11 of 11. those movies have I can't do math either. The yeah, Canadian it, math it, is metric. You know, I, yeah, I think it's the conversion. It's the conversion. It's the, it's the conversion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. But it's the 11 movies where they've all and even the Mandalorian to that to that extent has all connected uh, with this thing that they've referred to as the Skywalker saga. It's all kind of lived in that bubble of time. And we've heard, um, you know, some saying that they're going to stay, like the High Republic is going back, but we're still going to get Yoda. So it's still going to, everything is going to connect. Is it, and Lauren, I'll start with you, is it the mm-hmm. right decision for them to go 50,000 years in the future or 50,000 years in the past? Give it, the year doesn't really matter, but and just ignore the Skywalker saga or should whatever they do going forward, not maybe in your face, but have little ties mm-hmm. to, to what we've seen and what we know. It might not be Skywalker. Maybe as Emperor Palpatine has mentioned things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think either way, I mean, if you go, you know, so much forward, so much back, you know, I think what, they probably will do in in my opinion i would like them to go completely just away from the skywalker saga and do something brand new new characters new area of the galaxy something that we have no idea about and have never heard of you know that that to me that that is more exciting than trying to kind of piece things together as far as like connecting things like you're saying the high republic we're gonna have yoda which is great a great character we all love him and there's little connections like that i like i would love to go like i Either or, either forward or back. Um, I would love to just be in completely new area of the galaxy that we have not explored yet. We are very unfamiliar with. That's what I would like. Um, but will they do that? I don't know. I think if you want to keep kind of the general audience, because obviously we're hardcore, we're all hardcore Star Wars fans. We're going to watch it anyway, regardless. Mm. Um, but I think to kind of keep maybe the general audience intrigued, you kind of have to keep. Maybe, like you're saying, like in the High Republic, you bring in Yoda. Or if you go forwards, maybe you only go a couple, you know, like 10, 10, 15 years, you bring in Rey, and she's an older Jedi or something like that. You keep it so the general audience can maybe kind of keep it all together and like, oh, that's Star Wars. You know, that's that. Or, you know, so that that's just how I would perceive that they would do it, is to kind of keep it connected in a certain way. I would love if they just completely went off and just did it like, yep, this is Star Wars, but it has nothing to do with the Skywalkers, nothing to do with Vader, Luke, Leia, Han, anybody. Like, just go completely away from that and start something fresh with brand new, like, characters that we have never, ever heard of. And I think that helps fandom a little bit because then the, the expectations are all at the same level. They should be anyway. Because we don't have like the OT to refer to or the prequels or the sequel trilogy to kind of like nick and pick, you know, and, and all that. So that's in my wrong in my long tangent. That's that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Pete. 
It's interesting because I think a lot about, uh, you know, Lauren, you you echoed a sentiment that I, I've heard from a lot of people saying, I want to move away from the Skywalker saga. And I think, well, that's um, that's a, a, a and for all the right reasons. Right. So that we don't mm-hmm. uh, we don't uh, we don't miss expectations and we don't uh, we, we have the opportunity to meet new characters. But I think one of the things that it, the the other point that you made, which is really really important, is that the people who watch this show and my show and Lauren's show, um, we're a very special small group and um, mm. s- special in multiple <laughs> ways. <laughs> but um, um, and, and that if you think about the vast audience, even if think about even the largest Star Wars podcasts out there, even you know the people that uh, like a Star Wars Explained, for example, right? They have, I don't know, 630,000 subscribers on YouTube. If you think about that, if those were the only people that bought movie tickets to see Star Wars, it would be a failure. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, you they need to appeal to that larger audience. When I think yeah. about The Rise of Skywalker, which um, I had so many issues with, I accepted it as a Star Wars film, but I'm... I'm I'm still processing it. It's a year later and I'm still like, I got issues with that. I got to pull through. Um, But it's funny because, you know, like if we take my most base problem with something like Rise of Skywalker, it's because the emperor came back and we didn't get any explanation. Right. And so that's that's like sort of the the bottom of the pyramid of problems that I had with Rise of Skywalker. Um, However, when I walked out of the movie theater with friends of mine who were just, you know, in that larger than 670,000 people who follow Star Wars Explained, mm-hmm. um, they were like, that was great. I love that movie. And it's because there was almost the Thanos effect, right? In that they recognized Palpatine as the bad guy. Oh, it's that guy from the movie from 30 years ago. I get it. This is something mm-hmm. I can attach to. Um, so I think it's a challenge. Now, that being said, I think. Um, it was, I can't remember which guest it was on my show, but it, it's not, not important. It was probably it's important me. to them. It was, probably me. It, was pr- it was probably James cause yeah. he was brilliant. Um, <laughs> but somebody was saying that the best way to have looked at the sequels, the best way to have done them was not to say this is an extension of the Skywalker saga, but to say that it is movies that would take place afterwards mm-hmm. stories that take place afterwards not seven eight and nine and yes you may see some old friends like han or leia or luke and i think that's where they can go i would like to see him move forward i want more ray and finn i mm-hmm. loved seeing ray training finn in the lego special i have to say i know oh, it's yeah. not canon but that was really cool to see so um i think making those connections because it's it's funny it, at the end of the day People always say the Star Wars universe is so small. Why is R5-D4 in in The Mandalorian? (laughs) Well, because we like seeing that sort of thing. And even if we don't get Luke or Han or Leia, but a reference to Coruscant or, you know, Emperor Palpatine or, you know, Yaddle. I don't know, somebody. (laughs) um, Those are the kinds of things that make those connections. So I think it's important to not move too far away. I'm and I'll be honest and, and I would probably get a lot of flack for this, but. Um, especially because I, I've interviewed a lot of the authors, but I'm not that excited about High Republic. I want to be, but I'm not. And I think it's because it does take place in that different time. And I know that I'm I'm one fan of millions. And so um, it, it's it, it's just a different perspective. Brock? I agree with both of you. It, it's It's hard to like decide what we want because star wars mm-hmm. fans we have the shortest memory span in the whole <laughs> like, oh no, do you not remember um because you both make good points it's like yeah let's because one of the problems with the sequels was like they didn't handle this handoff of the new generation characters to mm-hmm. and the old generation. Like, I get it. You want them all in there. We want to know where these characters end up. But, like, it became sort of messy on so many different things. And I agree. Like, Finn and Rey and Poe, they're interesting characters. And honestly, to, like, the third one, we barely get to spend time with them. Which I know is weird because they're the main characters. But, like, I feel like the, the, the camaraderie that you see in the beginning of uh, Rise of Skywalker, it's like, yes. Like, Right. Let's make a show about this. And they all right. live in an apartment in New York and work in a coffee <laughs> shop. Um, but I, it's, it's sort of like, I don't think it needs to be like, 
dispel the past. <laughs> you don't need to be like Kylo Ren and destroy the past. It <laughs> you can still embrace it. I think it needs to be the question needs to be answered is like what makes a Star Wars movie a Star Wars movie. So it's like it, I am very optimistic for the future if they're allowing people like Filoni and Favreau to make the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I, I say this over and over again. Filoni is the new George Lucas. He doesn't need to create any new yep. content or whatever. He just should be someone that's on every single set. And they're like, hey, Dave, what do you think about this? And he'd be like, yep. it is so. Or what's yeah. <laughs> it's the way. Right. <laughs> the way. <laughs> Sorry. It's late. <laughs> this is the way. Like, it'd be perfect. He doesn't need to be the director. He doesn't need to be the writer. He just has to be there. Hmm. So... The question needs to be, do they have someone that's going to, or not just someone, it's a group of people. They, they need to plan it out. So that's what I would like to see over everything. If it's like, this is what young Yoda looks like, or this is, I don't know, this is, uh, I don't want to go to these characters. Like, cause I agree with you. It's like, oh, we have this high Republic and it's not going to have any of the characters in it. It's like, oh, but we're going to have Yoda. I'm like... Why don't you just, like, sit on that a little bit longer? I don't want, like, a Yoda character to be the surprise every time. You know, with Baby Yoda, like, oh! But it's, like, I don't know. So it's, like, I think they just need a plan, and they just Mm -hmm. have to embrace originality and then go from there. Yeah, I think the key word is just familiarity. I think Mm -hmm. that's how you, you bridge the gap between, you know, the hardcore fans that are on... You know, watching Star Wars explain versus the casual fans who are like, "Oh my God, the Shrively guys in it." It's, that, that's a, it's just familiarity, right? It's like you know, you name drop once in a while because I, I think yep. I think what's important because look, like Dune's coming out, so what's going to separate the next Star Wars movie that's not a Skywalker saga from Dune? Exactly. I mean, aside from lightsabers, obviously, but you name drop little <laughs> things every once in a while. I think that's that's the best way to go. And you kind of, I've always had this thing where the Skywalker saga is like the center of the Star Wars universe, and mm-hmm. we're slowly you slowly branch out and expand from there. And eventually, mm-hmm. we won't have to connect to it because we'll be so far gone, and we'll have all these other attachments along the way. Um, so that's how I've always kind of seen it. I think slowly you've got to remove yourself, but you need to to pace it properly. And one thing I, I wanted to bring up with everybody is, you know, we're 40, is it 42 years since Star Wars? And it's just like every, so many people that watch our, uh, this show and, and listen to you guys have found Star Wars through something else, a different medium, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. the movies, maybe it's a book, maybe it's Rebels. Uh, because you know, Clone Wars or now Mandalorian, there's so many different avenues to explore. Does so, mm-hmm. Brock? Do, does Star Wars need the movie theater? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so the movie theater needs Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they go in. They go in hand in hand. Uh, you can you can go to bat for streaming or. Uh, digital theater or di- digital yeah, home digital home theater is the word I'm searching for like but you go to the movie for spectacle movies like Star Wars or mm-hmm. Fast and the Furious I don't know but you know <laughs> what I mean you, you go for those event things like you it's nice to go to the film and see a nice art, artsy film independent film whatever I love going to the theater I miss it so so much mm-hmm. um, but like you the, if you turn if the theater turns its back or star wars turns back on the theater it's just like it's just not going to be the same uh it's easy to think that they could now that they have disney plus but like i don't know Mm. Uh, we talked about uh with mulan being released because of the because of everything being shut down it did okay on disney plus and people paid that extra 30 dollars now star wars doing that probably would have been a huger success because it has that clout. But at the end of the day, like Disney's like Disney, Lucasfilm, whoever is going to be like, we made money. We could have made more money because (laughs) everybody likes, especially when Star Wars drops at Christmas time. Like it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it needs theater quite honestly. And yeah. 
Laura? Yeah, I it does. I, I totally agree with Brock. It, it's one of those things, obviously, as we are all Star Wars fans and just probably movie fans all uh, as a whole, we're probably mm. all four of us are. I love going to the movies. I love going to see like the Marvel, the Star Wars, Star Trek, Dune, all of it. Like it, I'm there for it. So, you know, it's an interesting time that we're in right now because of the pandemic and everything. But I think once we kind of get, you know, the dust settles, I think obviously people will go back to the movie theaters. Cause I think that is one thing that people do enjoy going. They like to get, you know, out of their maybe reality and go into a, a movie theater and just kind of let it, let it sink in and let them kind of take it, take them into like a escapism, you know, as, as I think some people call it. So yeah, I, I hope it doesn't, you know, I hope Disney does or Disney Lucasfilm, they don't go and start doing star Wars movies and dropping them on Disney plus. I don't think they will. I don't, I don't see them doing that. I think like the whole Mulan thing was maybe just because of what was going on. You know, I don't see a lot of, you know, these franchises, these huge IPs doing that um, once everything kind of gets back to normal. But what the one thing, though, I think is interesting is that obviously, you know, back in 1977, George Lucas and what his kind of creativity was, was groundbreaking. And, you know, ILM and all that. Now look what they're doing with The Mandalorian. That's going to change not only, I Uh think, how they film Star Wars movies, that's going to change everything once, you know, people start using that. Because you can tell from season one to season two the huge, like, difference. Yeah. I think you can tell. Because obviously in season one, they were still paying, you know, paying the money off for building the volume. <laughs> but now it, all the budget's going to the show itself. And you can tell the, the, the difference, you know. But I still think Star Wars is a, like Brock said, it's an event. It's what people go to, like like us, even the general audience. I mean, there are people that just go to movies and like, oh, hey, Star Wars is back. We'll go see it. You know, the people like to go to the theaters. So I think it, once everything gets back to, you know, some type of normalcy and theaters are back and, you know, filming begins and projects are going, I think it will be fine. Um, I think it actually helps with the longer break because now I think like we were kind of talking about earlier, they can, you know, maybe write the complete story of a trilogy that they want to do. You know, maybe they, they, they can create this whole story instead of maybe maybe the sequel trilogy, you know, they're kind of not piecing it together, but doing it fast so they could get it out to the masses. I think there they was a hat and they were pulling plot ideas out. As yeah. they were, oh, they I were totally agree. It. Yeah, I mean, it, it was so. I mean, you could it felt that way sometimes, yeah. right, to to us hardcore fans, you know. So maybe this this break, this kind of, you know, instead of coming out in 2022, you know, maybe we're here in 23 or past. That's fine for me. Like, because also because of Disney Plus, we're getting yeah. Star Wars content regardless. So we're being fed either way. You know, I mean, I'm I'm rewatching Rebels because I freaking love that show. Yeah. And it's because it's accessible good, on, yeah. on Disney yep. Plus. Yeah. So, you know, and I think it will be back. I think it will be fine once the movie theaters open up and, you know, production to these movies kind of start rolling back again. They'll be fine. I don't see them going into like a whole straight to streaming I think it was just a, a thing that was just happening right now. That's why I think some movies did that for sure. Yeah, you know, I think it's um, – I wish I thought about this a little bit more before we talked, but I, I have a, a, a thought that I think we're going to see sort of a, a hybrid approach. So um, first of all, when, when Disney Plus launched, um, I had said back then that – Disney doesn't invest in these sort of things unless they know they're going to win. Disney has a magic crystal ball and they can see the future. And they recognized that Netflix and Hulu and uh, Amazon and there that's where the money was. And so they got into it. And it was funny because when we first got Disney Plus, right, I think a lot of us were excited because we were going to get all the classic Disney movies. And we thought of it as truly a Disney platform. Well, now I think a lot of people look at it as a Marvel and Star Wars platform that happens to have National Geographic and all those great (laughs) animated movies on it. And so what I think we're going to see, because one of the things to keep in mind is that the pandemic is impacting things in ways that we are not yet aware of. So things like every every piece of marketing will change. The fact that, you know, this was sort of the tipping point to push a lot of retail out of business that was going out of business anyway. And it's a horrible thing to say because there's so many great businesses we've lost as a result of this, but it's true. Um, 
And I think we will see a hybrid situation where we will see many more movies released on your streaming service and in theaters at the same time because – um, the movie going experience is expensive, and in order for mm. the movie going, uh, in order for theaters to catch back up, it's going to remain expensive. And so, but it is a, it's a great experience, right? I would much mm. rather on a Saturday take my kids to go see a movie in the theater and make it an event versus you know Saturday night let's go rent something or let's see what's on <laughs> Disney Plus, which is fine, but it's a different experience. So, but I also feel like. The, the change, the seismic change that will happen is people will become comfortable with not mm-hmm. going out. Because as much as I love going to the movies, I love watching them at home. I love mm-hmm. that experience, right? So um, I think my prediction is we will see things dropped on both streaming services and in theaters at the same time or much closer together. I mean, they're very close n- now, but I think perhaps even, even you know, you could see Tenant drop on Amazon and in the theater at the same time, because I would rather see it in the theater and experience it that way. But since I may also, you know, somebody else may enjoy it a different way. So I think, I think we're going to see more star Wars on Disney plus, I think, you know, a a bold prediction, right. That we will see (laughs) the next star Wars movie drop on Disney plus and in theaters. If it's 2023, Mm -hmm. 2024, it could happen at the same time because us hardcore fans, the four of us, we're going to a theater to see it. We're mm-hmm. going to be there. We're going to line up. We're going to go to that Thursday night showing, and we <laughs> will be there. However, my dad may just want to watch it, and he's willing to pay an extra $5 maybe on Disney Plus for that month to watch it. So I think we're going to see a hybrid, and I and I think to, to the point that you were making, Lauren, the fact that things like The Mandalorian look so good <laughs> – it's no longer you no longer have movie. I, I mean, honestly, in Mandalorian season one, you could see the difference between movie theater mm-hmm. and and TV. The first four episodes that we've gotten, and it'll be five by the, the day after this drops. Mm-hmm. Th- they look like they were shot for movies. I mean, think movie about, quality. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I think about it, just just the look of the scene on the boat in mm-hmm. uh, in, in the, the episode of Bo-Katan that felt like a, a film to me. So I think they're getting there. And I think that it's, like I said, it'll be a hybrid. It'll be sort of a mix of the two. I think what we're seeing too is Taika Waititi said, he's going to be using the volume for the new Thor movie, which he has to do mm-hmm. before star Wars. So you can only imagine that a, the technology is going to increase dramatically by the time Thor comes out, probably. And he's going to understand how to use it a lot more as well. Because when yeah. you, if you watch that the uh, the gallery show, the man where they talk about it, where John Favreau talks about it, it took him since the Jungle Book to kind of get to that point, and then the team building it and whatnot. So it's very exciting. Now I want to get to a free for all now. So just jump in when you want, <laughs> because this is going to be uh, this is the question that I think we all ask ourselves without needing to ask it. But when they, the new Star Wars movie comes out, whatever that is, are we going to find out what Star Wars is? Or what, what is Star Wars is the question. What what do we go to the theater for Star Wars and what makes Star Wars Star Wars and separates it from the rest of the pack? Oof. It's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's just for me, like throughout – you know, in the Skywalker saga, and you can even add into the Clone Wars and Rebels, just the overall themes, I think, in Star Wars of family, of, you know, kind of growing up, you know, and becoming this this person that maybe you didn't think you were, that you could be, you know, those kind of inspirational themes. That, for me, as I've gotten older, that's what draws me into Star Wars now. Those are the types of things that I love about Star Wars. Yeah, it's cool to have a lightsaber. It's cool to see the blasters, the ships, all that. But I love the themes, I think, more than I ever have before. You know, obviously as a kid, we all like, you know, the the pew, 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 the, <laughs> everything like that. That was cool stuff. But now for me, as I've gotten older, it's more the themes. It's the family and everything like that. You know, the good versus evil is great. It's just those deeper themes, I think, that we see in especially for me especially in like rebels like that family theme is so good and it's so great and it's well done that's what i love about star wars for me that's what draws me in every time and you know seeing all the other cool stuff all the you know all the cool stormtroopers and all that that's just a bonus but i love the 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 storytelling 
for me, that's what that's what draws me, and that's what Star Wars is for me. Yeah, yeah Brian. Uh, Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Uh, no. uh, I agree. Uh, it's about family. Uh, it, my first response in my head was like the Force. Like, mm-hmm. though we have had a lot of Star Wars stuff that doesn't really include the Force right at the forefront. But perhaps what you were saying about family is like that is the Force at work as well. It, it for some it's 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 it just seems to always be a story about like finding your place, which in the galaxy, in a family in just in general right so it's like perhaps for the ones that don't have jedi or sith or a lightsaber perhaps that's the force in action the force so like to pivot off of yours i think it's like i think it's about finding your place mm-hmm. and finding and understanding why the galaxy works the way it does uh, that's how i see it as star wars and he walks thank you yeah, <laughs> and he walks well you know it's funny because i think i every, i've been asking that question on my show as well sometimes and and it, it, everybody has a different perspective and and i i love what i just heard um from the both of you and i do think it requires a certain level of of classic storytelling, which I think is where your family comes in and looking for belonging. And at the end of the day, if you look at the magic of myth and all that sort of thing, it's that's that's the root is what is. And and I, I will say this as much as there were missed opportunities in a movie like Rise of Skywalker, when you if you just follow Ray's arc and you you leave out your whether you like the Palpatine connection or not or the Skywalker thing or not her arc at least makes sense and that's that's why it worked so I think you need to stick to those sort of mythical principles um, but I think what's also interesting is because it is now a 43 year old franchise with um, seven seasons of Clone Wars and four seasons of Rebels and who knows how long we're going to go with Mandalorian and and eleven films. I think it's building off its own culture. It's becoming its own genre in a way. And so, and I think that's why Mandalorian works so much better than Resistance, for example. Um, There's probably more reasons why Resistance didn't work, but Resistance was very surface level. It gave, it was a, and it was probably why my son, who was, I think, five at the time when it first came out, he liked it because it was, it was racing spaceships, but it could have been, It could have been, you know, that old 70s cartoon G-Force, or it could have been Battlestar Galactic. It could have been anything. It was fun. Um, but there was not a lot of deep connection, and it felt like forced connection, no pun intended. But I think when you when you see things like Mandalorian with those callbacks to itself, that sort of self-awareness, um, and I think that's honestly why the Lego stuff works. <laughs> why why should a 50 year old man sit and watch a lego cartoon by himself um because well that's that's maybe a whole other show in itself but um but it's because it's amusing enough because it's calling back to that universe that that we've we've started to build so what i've said half in jest and and i think i might be serious about it um is that to be a Star Wars movie, I think there's some unwritten rule that a lightsaber must appear. So if you think about um, uh, Solo, why the hell did Maul call his lightsaber? There was no reason for that at all. People could tell it was Maul. He had the horns. He had the red face. He had the black tattoos. We got it. It was Maul. But he pulled that lightsaber. Rogue One, Vader, the ending mm-hmm. with that lightsaber was so important for us as fans, but it called it into it. And then I started to think, well, they didn't have a lightsaber in The Mandalorian. But if you look at the first eight episodes as one story, Mm -hmm. your lightsaber showed up at the end. So Mm -hmm. to me, again, that's a very basic way to put it, that a lightsaber must be involved. But I think it needs to at least refer to the quote-unquote religion of that universe, which is the Force. And it's not necessarily the Jedi or the Sith, but it needs to call on that religion. And I think that's what separates it from other stories of family and other stories of action and adventures, there's some spiritual center. I mean, even Game of Thrones was about family and that sort of, but there was no religion, right? There was no philosophy um, that all the characters were were sort of drawn to. Yeah, I was kind of amazed. I don't know about you guys, when Mandalorian, I, I going into it, did not expect 
the force whatsoever in that show. And then the mm-hmm. second episode, bam, it hits you right away with yep. little baby Yoda's little hands picking up space <laughs> rhino and tossing him. <laughs> I, what's it? Mudhorn. The Mudhorn. Mudhorn. Yeah. <laughs> space rhino. I thought it, you know, I was really excited. I thought I, it was the, the space rhino works. Yeah, space, space, rhino. space rhino is actually, yeah. I'm going to start using that. I like, yeah, like space, it. It's copy, <laughs> copywritten, patent pending. Oh, it's copy. All right. Only oh, can. <laughs> yeah. We also can. all murder planet <laughs> <laughs> the, the best dance do you think though that um the, i'm just do you are you worried that they will stray away from any of those concepts in future films like i think family will be family but lightsabers i think you're, you're right they keep bringing them up but i also feel like a part of me feels like sometimes they want to shy away from them and would would you be okay with that at all well i think one of the interesting things is that and somebody said it that you know has favreau uh F- filoni rather ever actually done a show that it was named after right so rebels rebels was a jedi story i mean it was it was a lot of it, and it was a family story and that's those two things worked well together with with the Mandalorian. I think we all expected, just like you were saying, James. I don't. I didn't expect to see the Force at all. I expected it to be pure cowboy, uh, you know, kind of uh, gunslinger kind of story. And and like you said, it came back in. So, um, you know, it may not have to be a lightsaber, but I I definitely think that you know, even a show like uh, the Cassian Andor show, there needs to be a reference to that sort of underlying philosophical um, 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 message of some sort. That you know, sure you have hope, but you know, without um, without the mysticism, it's it's just doom. Well, not that you know. I don't know enough about Dune, so I could be wrong. It's <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Let's do it that way. Because <laughs> I know Dune has all kinds of awesome stuff in it that I just don't have the attention span. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen or read a Dune ever, too. So yeah. Brock tells me I'm missing out. Uh, not on the Fincher movie. <laughs> <laughs> Classic, though, in its own horrible way. <laughs> Uh, so let's uh, wrap this up with one final thought. Uh, it's not really a thought. Prediction. <laughs> one final prediction would be the correct wording here. Brock, I will start with you. In what month and what year are we going to get the first teaser trailer for Taika Waititi's Star Wars movie? <laughs> if he is, in fact, the next... His movie would be the next Star Wars movie. I'm going to say... April of 2023 because oh, wow. it's come out Christmas of 2023. Yeah. Lauren? Ooh. Um, if we're assuming 2023 and I would agree with Brock, I, I think you got to stay in that Christmas area. I mean, that's kind of become the whole, like a star Wars staple now. Um, oh, I would say celebration, but that's in August of 2022. So, mm. Um. Yeah, I probably go. I think what Brock like spring ish of twenty three. I think would be our first teaser if it comes out that Christmas. Um, I think it'd be somewhere around there. Pete, I'm going to say August twenty twenty two at yeah. celebration, Good and call. I think it'll it'll be part of an announcement that that the, here it comes, and it'll be it'll be a a. A true teaser. Like I think we're when we hear we're getting a teaser, we expect two and a half yeah. minutes. <laughs> but I, I I think it'll be like you know one short little scene of somebody walking somewhere or something. And but I think that'll be where we'll get a title and a and a name uh, or in a and a just a, a final date. And I I agree. I think it's uh it's got to be the holiday season. That's that's become a tradition and it's probably one of the traditions that I'm missing most yeah. uh, this right. year is, is not having a star Wars film come out. I, I'm going to say you're all wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have insider. In your nice Canadian way. Or yep. You're telling us. Oh wrong. yeah. Hey, there he <laughs> um, Actually Pete's, Pete's probably a better hockey player than both of us, Brock. So he's got... <laughs> um, I'm going to say, We'll get information on it in August 2022 at Celebration. However, the teaser 
will mirror that of the Force Awakens, and we will get it on mm. Black Friday of 2022. Or was it? Yeah, it was Black Friday, right? 2022. Yeah. We will get it. It'll be a brief introducing like oh look at that face look at that face look at that face and then something we all recognize and go and then (laughs) star wars whatever it's called comes on the screen (laughs) and then the movie the movie definitely is coming out christmas 2023 um yeah or 2024 it'll christmas time is 100 percent. i think solo i think i don't think it really necessarily is fair to say because of when solo came out based on the 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 timing of the year i think it was just star wars star wars was too much all at once but i think they, they're satisfied with the performances of star wars at christmas time and i think like you've mm-hmm. all said it's we've all kind of looked forward to it it was like the early 2000s it's like lord of the rings is coming let's go to the theater and watch that yeah. lord of the rings you know this mm-hmm. is what we want and it fits in so but that's those are our predictions we'll all be back here in in two years um <laughs> and you will all owe me a donut that's what we're <laughs> I'll send you a Dunkin' Donut. <laughs> Perfect. I'll send sure you a be... Tim Hortons Donut. Uh, Tim Hortons Donut. <laughs> and Brock's going to make me one. <laughs> uh, well, that's it. We'll wrap it up there. Anybody, Anyone has any final thoughts that they want to spew out about Star Wars in the theater? Because theaters are dead for now, but they will be back just like Darth Maul. And Boba Fett, <laughs> and Emperor Palpatine, and Metal legs. <laughs> Some kind of theaters have returned. <laughs> that, that is the yeah. That line is just you. Just cut the line out, and it doesn't change the movie at all. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I you could probably edit this out because it's a it's a it's a story on a tangent. But when I interviewed Jason Fry, one of the things he talked about was in one of the Han Solo books that he read. He talked, and this was, of course, it was it was before Rise of Skywalker. He talked about he was reading this book, and it just struck him because literally at one in one page they said something like, "and somehow he escaped," and or something like that. And he was like, "You can't tell a story that way. You can't do that." (laughs) Oh yes, you can. (laughs) Apparently, yeah, you can. can. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And Pete, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? You can follow me on Twitter at ATGCast, or you can find my show and, and all the others at BeyondTheBlastDoors.com. And Lauren? Yeah, uh, well, thanks for having me on. First of all, guys, always fun talking Star Wars with everybody, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you can follow me uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Knows, and then you can follow the Galactic Podcast at the Galactic Pod on Twitter, and we're all over podcast platforms, so uh, you can pretty much find us anywhere. Brock, where can they find you? Uh, you can call me on my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Late night when you need Star Wars love. Uh, <laughs> check me out at BF Smink uh, Instagram and on Twitter. Yeah. Don't don't tell people to find you on Twitter because you won't Brock be there. Brock Smink on LinkedIn. I. <laughs> Always need more jobs, anyways. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you both so much for joining us on this uh, Thanksgiving pleasure. roundtable. We've been keeping you from your turkeys long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. It was a lot of fun doing this. Uh, I'm James, and uh, that's Lauren, Pete, and the guy who was always scum. Oh, rebel scum. <laughs> <laughs> Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.